everybody, you're very welcome to Simonstown. And again, we're back with Flexibus at a very special occasion because the room inside, I thought it was packed last year, but to be honest, it's jammers. And talk about crack and people meeting up with other people. You never know who you're going to bump into. And I'm delighted I bumped into somebody very special today, and it's Mr. Thomas Byrne. How are you doing? Hi, Marion. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Thanks for the compliments. <laughs> I don't normally get that in an interview. Do you not? Uh, I'm surprised because you're a TD. That. Are you guys not very popular at the moment? Uh, I think every, everybody likes their own local TD, generally speaking, and, yeah. and then they, they decide at the next election who they want to be the TD for the next time. So it's, it's like that, yeah. Well, listen, you didn't just start off with the Fianna Fáil. Um, you started with, as a barrister, didn't you? Or a, a solicitor, solicitor, yeah. yeah. I was a solicitor, yeah. And um, uh, worked in Dublin and Drada and then ended up running for the Dáil. And uh, here I am, yeah. <laughs> Some years later, yeah, elected to, to the Dáil, yeah. You make it sound very easy, but no. I'm sure they had to vet you. Well, the members decide who's going to run for the election, so I suppose they have to check out who, who they want to run. And in fact, every election you have to get re-endorsed. So this year I had to run for election again to be the candidate. So, yeah. so that happens all the time. So it keeps you on your toes and keeps you in touch with people as well. I think that's yeah. really important as a TD. And your role at the moment is involved with uh, education. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's really important at the moment? Because, you know, um, given the current uh, climate with children and iPhones, and is it something that we really need to push more with them? Well, it's not given enough focus uh, from, at a national level. It just isn't. Like, I mean, people don't, newspapers and television and radio don't focus on it enough unless there are problems. Now, in, and there are problems this week with school buildings. Now, in one sense, that's good because, in general, the Irish education system is doing quite well. Children are learning quite well and they compare well to other countries in terms of reading and maths ability. Uh, but there are problems there at third level, the cost of it, but also the cost of funding it too. Uh, so look, there's a range of issues that we have to deal with. In this area, in Mead in particular, it's about school buildings and making sure that the new people are moving into the likes of Navan, the likes of Dunshock, the likes of Ashburn and East Mead and other areas as will come, Kells, etc. Uh, they need schools as well, so that's obviously something that preoccupies and takes up my time. And do you get involved with the mental health and also the stress and the anxiety that seems to be coming onto a lot of our children these days? Because that's something that's really key that I think as part of the education we should work in tandem as well. Yeah, I think um, mental health is really important. I think it's very important, first of all, politicians make sure that mental health services are resourced in the country, that there's enough money, then leave it to the mental health professionals then to deal with it. That's one of the biggest problems. In, in schools, yes, there is now a new focus on well-being at the second level and primary schools as well are taking their own initiatives. But the only thing I'd say is about that, it's, it's very important and the most important part of that is that schools take an overall approach to it, it per permeates the whole curriculum etc. But we can't leave everything to schools uh, and I think sometimes with things like that um, that become issues of importance, they, oh, we let the teachers deal with it and they can't deal with everything. I think it's a whole of society problem and primarily of course our health services too. Yeah. Well, there's a whole different conversation if we're going to get into that. But apart from anything else, I also think that um, our teachers are key to the uh, educational system as well. And um, are there new support systems put in place for them as well? Because I do think there's a lot of stress in, within the culture of education with teachers and schools. Yeah, that's uh, something that has come up uh, in terms of support for teachers. I think more needs to be done in relation to that. We obviously need to give support to young people, but teachers themselves find it difficult, and they find it difficult maybe sometimes with colleagues, sometimes with uh, particular uh, children, or sometimes the atmosphere in a school, or the pressure that they're under, um, which I think needs to be addressed. And I think it is something that is absolutely has to be borne in mind. We must look after our teachers, their own mental health, uh, and indeed their welfare too. Because I remember years ago, and, and probably everybody tuning in now as well will remember when, you know, there was the time when there was more discipline allowed and you had more control over the students as well. And you could shout and they sit in their seat or you get a clip in the air. And, you know, it's not that many generations away from either of us sitting here as well. But I think there's a, there's a whole new generation of children now where you have to, there's a lot of PC going on where, you know, you have to draw lines in the sand where, with behaviour and everything else as well. So it has to be tough on the teachers. You know, and it, you need parental support as well. It, it is tough on teachers and of course corporate punishment is abolished so they probably get arrested if that happened and thankfully it doesn't happen yeah. uh, in school now so, so that's there. Look the child has to be the centre of the education system and sometimes with behavioural issues there are special needs behind that and they need to be first of all identified if, if they do exist and then addressed in terms of the supports that they need. So that's something that I would have put an emphasis on and continue to put an emphasis on is uh, supports for children with special needs uh, with behavioural issues and, and that then helps everybody in the school deal with things. 
Well, I love the whole new concept of Educate Together and how it's evolved as well, because I do think, as you say, there are children out there who were put in the back and are treated as undisciplined and, and, and also disruptive to the school or the class as well. And I, I'm, I'm delighted to see that there are changes and that the people are getting the support systems, because it's not just your role to be um, educating people about education, but you also have to edu people, educate people about the network of support that's out there as well. And certainly, look, talking to principals, looking back in the 70s and before, there were certainly a lot of children out there undiagnosed with ADHD or whatever, and that manifested itself in various problems. So look, if, if, if we can get the support for children and young people now, that will help prevent problems in the future, but also give them a better chance at life as well, which is what the education yeah. system is about. Well, there's a lot of people here who will be tuning in today, and especially people sitting in the room next door who are... T uh, able to use Flexibus because that's what this whole celebration is about today and I do know that the way that they were educated in the past was a lot tougher I do think as well because you know there's no sparing the rod on that one as yeah. well like you say corporate punishment thank God is gone as well but there's a new breed of children out there that have new needs as well and I think we all have to adapt to that. And actually Flexibus has played a key role in that because there's a lot of areas in this county where maybe there was no access out of it. One example being Stamullen where there's a lot of teenagers there and young people who'd only love to get into Drogheda or, or to get into Balbrig into go to the cinema, meet their pals or whatever. And Flexibus in Stamullen in particular, it was the largest town in Ireland without a bus service. And Flexibus introduced that. I lobbied extensively for it. They worked with the NTA and now they run this service. And actually the big beneficiary is young people in the area who can go to the cinema, who can get the who can go uh, bus to the train to get them to Dublin or meet their friends in school. It's absolutely fantastic. So while this, this morning here in Simonstown, a lot of the elderly users of Flexibus and they are a key demographic, key support, and it's a key support for them that the bus will pick them up, sometimes door to door, uh, and other times specific services to bring them into towns, hospital appointments, etc. But young people have been a huge beneficiary of Flexibus and I hope will uh, continue to be. There's also a bus service as well from um, to Ashburn to Belbriggan as well, which is bringing people in from rural areas again. And again, it's predominantly young people uh, who benefit from that, who don't drive, and who don't need to uh, drive once there's a bus service there. So. And socialisation is key, isn't it, as well? And that's what Flexibus is doing for so many people here. And as you say, you don't think about the younger generation who are isolated because there are a lot of them out there, teenagers especially. Yeah, yeah and look, what I would say to them as well is that if they feel that they need a bus service somewhere, don't be afraid to ring Miriam or any of the team in Flexibus that any time we've contacted them, uh, they've always tried to address issues. It's one of been a prime example, but I know that some children can be brought to youth clubs or whatever uh, if they need to be, and that Flexibus would do their level best to organise it. So it's, it's all generations really here uh, can, can, can benefit from Flexibus, and I've been a huge support to them, I hope, and uh, they started, I've worked closely with them over many years, I have to say, since I was first elected to the Dáil, and it's a, this goes from strength to strength, this event, but this event is only symbolises uh, what goes on and the benefit that those people get uh, you know, my, a lot of them, my close friends and, you know, uh, relations even, some of them, uh, they get just great enjoyment out of being able to go to their appointments, go to, to Drogheda or Navin or RD or wherever uh, Flexibus brings them uh, to do the shopping and just get out and meet people.